Hey there YouTube, Dr. Yash here. Welcome back to this week's episode of Tool Tip Third Day. Today we are going to be talking about this dial indicator. This happens to be a digital dial indicator as you can see. By the fact that it doesn't have a dial on its face and it instead has an LCD screen with numbers on it. Uh, it functions the same way. You're going to get measurements on it uh, using this, this push rod here. And you can see that the numbers are changing. Let's see if I can rotate that for you. There. Uh, this goes zero to one inch or so. Uh, this is just a cheap tool. Uh, it works good, but it um, it was cheap, so we got it from everyone's favorite discount tool supplier, along with the mag base that it's attached to. So I just wanted to show you guys this. I don't use this thing every day. I mean, this isn't like a super common tool. It kind of follows the same trend of specialty tools that you've seen on my, on this segment of my channel here lately. But this does come in handy when I need it. Uh, when I'm setting up wheel bearings on something that has tapered roller bearings in the front, like my truck or most old cars, you can use something like this. Or something where you need to set the in play, uh, you can use something like this. And basically, what you'll do. Uh, is like on the case of a wheel bearing I'll have it attached to the rotor face with the mag base and then I'll have the tip of this sitting in the drilled center of the spindle and you'll just move the you know you'd basically set it up you'd zero it and then you would rock the rotor back and forth and you would see how much in play that that bearing has and that's how you would set the in play uh, so Another thing I've used it for is for setting up cylinder heads when I'm rebuilding them and making sure that the valve guides are not trashed. And again, here's another example. I have this this old valve here. It's actually a burnt uh, valve out of an engine exhaust valve. So you'd have it in the in the head. We'll just pretend that this blank space here is a cylinder head, and this valve is sitting in it, and it's sitting in its guide, which is just a sleeve of some predetermined material that will hold on to this valve as it moves up and down in the engine. So what you would do is you would set your we'll just we'll do it this way. I'm trying to make sure that it's square with it so you kind of get the idea here. So you'd have your top of your valve here. You really want it we'll just say I got the head sideways here. We'll say I've got the tip of the valve here and I've pushed it down so the valve's not seated. I zero the gauge out and then I would move it back and forth. And this is exaggerated because you can actually see the movements. Most of the time when you're measuring stuff with these, you're doing comparative readings and you're not getting, you're not really getting much visible movement. You're getting like a few thousandths and the tolerance is a few thousandths. So then you would know, okay, I need new valve guides or I need new, you know, in the case of, of a valve where you might have wear on the stem, but somehow it didn't damage the guides, then okay, well, I need new valves or whatever. You would use this in conjunction with other measuring tools to determine what you would need to do in that situation, but this video is not to teach you how to measure the whatever I'm measuring with it. It's basically just to show you that this exists. It's pretty inexpensive. I think. I probably, I don't even remember, I've had it so long, it's, I've probably paid less than 40 bucks for the whole setup, or less than 50 bucks, but it comes in handy, because you need to know the end play of your wheel bearings when you're setting them up for the proper, uh, for your brakes to work properly, because your wheel, your rotor's not going to be moving around as you drive, your bearings are going to last longer, because they don't have too much in play, or not enough in play, they're not going to be flopping around, or burning themselves up, you're going to get better gas mileage because you, again, are not wearing into your brakes by the rotor leaning in against the pads. Lots of things like that. I could, I could just go down a list of things that you could use to use this to measure. And, you know, if you're just a, a hobbyist at home, it makes a lot of sense to buy the cheaper version like this. But, um... That being said, I think I think you get the idea of what this tool does and what it's used for. It is pretty useful, although, like I said, I don't use it every day. It's not something I even use particularly common. But when I need it, I need one, and no one has one for me to borrow. So, this 
this is a dial indicator. They have a manual version. This is digital. It does take batteries. You know, you can get what you want. I chose the digital one for the easy screen reading and because you can bounce back and forth between, you can do a quick conversion between metric and inches. So that's pretty nice. And you can zero it wherever at the push of a button. Um, and this stand is about as basic as it gets as far as as far as uh, stands go, so that is what it is, so yep, so today's tool, dial indicator I hope you enjoyed this segment and uh, let me know if there's any tools you want to see, any tools you think I might have or any tools you think I need to buy uh, let me know down in the comments and as always, like, comment, subscribe I'll see you next time